and valuable artifacts, an entire village, evidence of a past life. People who were here long before us have turned up in an archaeological site in the valley. Yeah, only on Arizona's family. A local activist is on a mission to keep that area preserved and to prevent new public housing from going up. So Colton has more on this. Usually when they find relics, they mm -hmm. usually stop everything. Yeah, and that's what they did in this scenario, too. And really, uh, Scott and Olivia, this has been this local activist's passion for the better part of a year now to try to get this to stop. She wants the city to stop building and to let her ancestors rest after she says a lot of remains were found. She says if she can't stop it, she hopes to spread awareness for future tenants before they move in. The crews are finishing construction on the city's latest affordable housing project, Harmony at the Park, 310 units of mixed income housing. The development near I-10 and Van Buren is set to open in January. The city touts its modern look and energy efficient appliances, a stark contrast to what was recently unearthed. I kind of found out about this site through a friend who lives in the area. Marina Thomas is an indigenous activist from the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community. She told me that there was some construction going on across the street and that they had found human remains. She did some digging of her own, so to speak, and found out her ancestors once had a thriving community here, an ancient Otham village called La Ciudad. She shared drone video of what crews uncovered. You could see all the outlines of all the pit houses. This entire section was just rows upon rows. Like It just looked like a drawing almost. The city confirms this, saying construction halted temporarily while archaeologists recovered human remains and artifacts. They told Arizona's family they repatriated items to the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community. However, city officials could not give specifics on what was found, citing an agreement with the tribes. But not everything was recovered. Thomas was shocked when she learned what was left behind. There's a piece there. There's a few pieces in there that are like rounded out. You could tell it's pottery because it's rounded out. It's got a curve. It's really consistent with all the other pieces that you'll see around here. She launched the online petition, Let Our Ancestors Rest, last spring, calling on the city to stop building. Nearly 43,000 others echoed her message to no avail. It hurts because I feel we had an opportunity to learn a lot from the site. Well, here at Phoenix, we're on top of part of a cultural landscape, I like to call it. There was thriving populations here for thousands of years. And the location of the project is within one of the village sites that we've known about. Lorreen Montero is the city's archaeologist. She says La Ciudad has been known about since the 1800s and that the city started talking to the neighboring tribe several years ago when talks of redeveloping the sites came into play. We have a agreement with them that outlines all the protocols that will follow and um, we're in very frequent um, dialogue with them. Montero showed us a map at the Pueblo Grande Museum that depicts other archaeological sites found across the valley. This could be like ASU or... That is ASU. <laughs> the museum sits on top of one of those sites as well. Its findings now preserved. In my heart, yes, um, I'd like to see them preserved, but what we do is try to preserve the places that we can, like Pueblo Grande. As for whether future residents of Harmony at the Park know about the history of the land, Montero says the information is out there, but will tell residents at the grand opening. But Thomas worries that'll be too late for residents, and she feels it's still a shame to see her ancestors' history paved over. It just breaks my heart because these are my family. I, I'm here because my ancestors are here. I just feel like my hands are behind my back with it. Like there's not really much I could do about it. And the apartment is expected to be open in January. I did reach out to the impacted tribe about this and they said due to the sensitive nature of this site and this ongoing process, they aren't making any comments. And again, guys, the city archaeologist says really it is protocol to keep this sort of development kind of, uh, you know, un undisclosed mm -hmm. while, while they're doing their stuff, uh, recovery pro um, yeah. efforts and things yeah. like that so that people don't disturb it. So, uh, but the activists we spoke to said mm -hmm. the 
the knowing what was there really needs to be out there for the public so that people come in who move in there if they have certain beliefs you know mm -hmm. should know about it. Is so. she getting much support? In these uh, so I talked to her about that and she said it's kind of a mixed bag you know she has a, a lot of other indigenous friends who are also activists who also helped her spearhead this effort uh, when she told me that she's spoken with the tribe about this she says that she's gotten some mixed response some of them are saying yes please go forward with this mm -hmm. and others are you know what's done is done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you Colton. Yeah.